Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Jan. My pronouns are he and him. And, I'm, and for anyone for, the, for with any like visual Im impairments, I'm a white male, 28 years old, and I'm wearing glasses and a white sweater. Uh, I'm a community manager here at HubSpot. Um, I run the RevOps community. And we, we try and set events up like these to give you more tools and, and education and everything you need to become a, rev a better operations professional. Uh, so we're holding this event in collaboration with, with RevOps.io. If you're in ops, it's probably a name you've heard of before. Uh, if not for the, the great daily newsletter, then it's probably for the amazing product that they've been building, a deal desk software specifically. Uh, and recently they launched an integration with HubSpot. Um, so yeah, here at HubSpot, we really, we really dig what they're doing. Uh, so we're really delighted to bring you this event and uh, get you a bit more familiar with the, the world of deal desk and particularly how to build a modern deal desk in HubSpot. Some quick notes, uh, this event is being recorded. We'll send you the video over to you tomorrow uh, together with any additional resources mentioned here uh, in the event. And if you have any questions for the speaker, uh, please use the Q&A uh, or yeah, use the chat for any like excitement and, and other questions. Uh, but uh, if we use the Q&A, it's, it's a bit easier for everyone here uh, to scroll through them and we can ask them. Uh, to the speakers at the end. But that's enough for me. I'm going to hand over the torch to uh, Mark Lerner, who can take it away. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen so we can get started. Um, make sure we're all here. Hopefully, everybody can see. Um, so thanks everybody for, for joining. Um, we're really excited uh, to be here. Thank you to Jan and the team at HubSpot. Um, we're really excited about this event, uh, how to build a modern deal desk um, in HubSpot. Um, this is a topic we're all you know, super passionate about here. Um, you know, and we're really grateful uh, to be able to be part of, of the HubSpot community here. And I just kind of a personal anecdote when I started uh, as a marketer way back uh, almost a decade ago, you know, uh, HubSpot was really kind of my source of truth. Every, pretty much everything I do these days in my marketing has come one way or another from what I've learned from HubSpot. So it's really kind of a, a dream come true uh, to be able to do these kind of initiatives. Um, so um, I'm joined today. My name is Mark Lerner. I'm the uh, head of marketing here at RevOps. I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Dan Veris, a senior account executive at RevOps. You'll notice that uh, some people think that we're brothers, uh, but we're not, or it's some, some way related. We just have the same uh, barber and haircut, which is bald and beard. Um, and it looks like today we're actually wearing the same gray, gray sweater. So we're really, really going at it, uh, really going with that uh, sibling look. Uh, but nope, we're not related. So, um, And I think I got a few years on him and a few kids on him as well. Um, so that's Dan, and, and we're going to be joined by Sherrod as well, who's our VP of Revenue here at RevOps, um, and really excited to um, have uh, Jennifer Quintero, the Director of Revenue Operations at Repsley, um, uh, as uh, joining us as a special guest as well. She's um, going to be going through some of uh, how Repsley uses uh, RevOps uh, deal desk uh, in their HubSpot. So um, just to give you uh, okay, I can't go forward on my slides here. That's fun. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're doing it live, right? We're, we've been in the Zoom world for <laughs> who knows how long, so we might as well be used to it, right? Okay. Uh, let's. So just to give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about today and, and just a little bit about uh, how everything's going to work. Um, we are going to spend a, um, we're going to break this down to uh, three, four parts. I'm really going to be talking about this topic about building a modern deal desk um, in HubSpot. Um, part one is going to be Sherrod and myself um, talking high level about um, deal desk in general, um, what it is, why your company needs it needs one, um, and kind of the responsibilities involved uh, in Deal Desk. Um, and my, my job is really going to be to keep Sherrod in line. Uh, he tends to get very passionate about this, pro um, this topic, and I get to be kind of his guardrails 
um, to make sure we stay on target. And we're gonna try to keep these to about 10, 15 minutes each so that we hit the 60 minute mark with some uh, opportunity for Q&A. Um, the second uh, part of this is going to be uh, my colleague, Dan. Um, and he is gonna talk about deal desk platforms in general um, and kind of the features that um, you should be looking for in a platform. And he's also gonna be giving a, um, a demo of the RevOps deal desk integration, native integration with HubSpot and some of the really interesting things you can do um, with RevOps and HubSpot together. Um, and then we're gonna pass it off to Jennifer, who's gonna be um, really excited about this. And, and thanks again, Jennifer, for joining us. Um, she's gonna be talking about how Repsly is actually using um, RevOps uh, deal desk and HubSpot uh, integration. Um, to you know, to really get thing the way she's gonna she uses it in Repsley, and uh, I'm excited personally to see how that that goes. So, um, and then we're gonna have some time at the end for the Q and A, um, and you know, feel free to put those questions in the, in the questions box. We're really gonna try to um, get to them uh, at the end. Um, so as we go, feel free to drop those questions, and we'll pick them out at the end uh, during the Q and A, um, and uh, hopefully get to all of them. And if not, you know, you can always reach out to us afterwards that we have a slide here with some of our contact information. Okay, so now we're gonna get to um, the first part of our chat here, which is our discussion um, with Sherrod and I, if my slides will move forward. Um, so before we do that, I wanted to give you a little bit of my spiel. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't do a little bit of a pitch about RevOps. So RevOps is a modern deal desk platform. Um, and we have this native integration with HubSpot, which we're super excited about, which lets you kind of build this modern deal desk in your, in your HubSpot, um, enabling some of these more flexible pricing models, um, as well as uh, automations around approvals, um, and customizable agreement templates um, with guardrails set uh, in place. And you can learn more by going to our website at revops.io. Uh, um, and you know, we, we are in the HubSpot marketplace. We have five, uh, five stars, as you can see this wonderful review from our friend Jennifer here. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so you can find us there. Um, so part one here, we're gonna get, well, let's get, let's get into it. Are you ready, Sherrod? Yep, as ready as I'll ever be, Mark. Thank you for the introduction. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd feel free to, if you, if there's, uh, yeah, no. yeah, no, and th thank you, uh, HubSpot, uh, for, for ha hosting us and, and giving us the opportunity here to showcase what we do and, and, and directly work with your, uh, platform as well. Um, I'm Sherrod, I'm the VP of revenue operations here at RevOps. I identify as he, him, and I'm wearing a checkered shirt. Um, so go ahead, Dan. Uh, I mean, Mark, your, your, yeah. your first question. Uh, oops. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so uh, let's start with the let's start with the at the beginning here. Um, as I pull up my slides again, um, what is a deal desk, right? So that we have this question a lot. Like, what what does that mean? Um, I think that there may be some kind of um, confusion around it. Maybe in a different time, in a different place, it meant something else. So what is um, uh, what does that mean? And um, why is it so important today? So, I mean, a, a deal desk is a function in your organization. Uh, you know, the way I look at it, and I've been doing this for, for quite, uh, you know, 10 years of just reviewing contracts and, and the treatment of these contracts. In my, in, in, in the way I would best explain a deal desk as a function is it's, it's a point of sale for SaaS. So when you say a point of sale, what does that mean? So, you know, in a, in a credit card transaction world, you, you charge a credit card and boom, that transaction's done, completed. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a deal desk world where you're dealing with contract, it's not as simple. So there's a completion check that needs to happen, um, making sure that the products that are being called out on an order form are products that you and your organization can support from a obligation and performance standpoint. Um, there's an approval workflow that needs to happen to make sure that the right people are looking at the contracts, legal team, um, you've got finance, making sure that the margins are in line. Um, it, there's, there's other compliance, uh, you know, just, just the DPA. You've got a lot of moving parts that are part of deal desk. So, you know, in a nutshell, 
deal desk is a function. Yeah. And so, like I said, I think there might be this misconception that in an older time, the a deal desk function was really something that was more of a much larger company, maybe a Fortune 500 company. Um, so I think you and I and some of the discussions that we've, we have with, um, with folks out there, you know, the part of it is kind of understanding why uh, a company, any company, early stage, mid stage, larger company in today's world uh, actually needs this kind of function within their organization. Yeah. So, you know, and, and my response to that usually is how important is your data? So that's like, if so, oh, do I need a deal desk? Well, is data important to you? So 99.9, .9, if not 100%. The answer is yes, whether you're doing one contract a month or whether you're doing 15, 20, 30, um, or whether you're a 10 people company or a thousand people company, data is important. Mm -hmm. um, why is data important? What kind of data does a deal desk function provide? Again, going back to being a point of sale, we're, uh, we're the gatekeepers of this data, a deal desk function. We have to make sure, it's all, it almost becomes like a project management kind of a function where you're making sure all the standard deals are flowing through smoothly. Um, again, you don't want to create bottlenecks. You want to automate as much as you can, standardize what you can. And when you do face the non-standard redlining and you have to get other stakeholders involved to get approvals or whatnot, um, you have the right uh, tools to be successful and not delay that sales process. Because you know now that I'm in sales and Dan and, Dan and I have been working on a lot of deals, um, selling is hard and creating uh, road bumps or bottlenecks and, and, and just not having the clear transparency on what's going on with my deal creates confusion. And not only that, it risks the deal of not being closed because again, it has to, it, you know, there's, there's a timeline, there's a, a, a SLA on when you want to get this deal back to the customer for signature. Um, and, and timing is very important in this whole process. So yeah. Having a, you know, again, you could be a one person company or a thousand people company deal that if data is important to you, you want a deal desk function. Right. And, you know, a little interesting anecdote. Um, uh, I don't know, it may have been a year at this point. Um, before Sherrod actually joined us here at RevOps, I was doing a uh, blog interview series. Um, where I was interviewing kind of revenue leaders uh, about their insights and experiences. Um, and I actually interviewed Sherrod and, you know, months later, he ended up joining our team. And, you know, one of the things that Sherrod really uh, hit home was the importance of the integrity of data. I think the quote was data and data integrity is everything. Um, yep. And how that fits into a deal desk um, and the importance of kind of the, the integrity of data that flows through. Um, and I think that's relevant to the audience here, uh, the HubSpot audience. So maybe we can talk a little bit of, about that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, why is this data important? So it's, there's two life cycles to this, to this function and deal desk basically sits right in between, which is the sales cycle. You've got the, you know, the lead qualifications and the deals move down to different stages. Um, when you get to a contract and signature stage, that's when salespeople get excited. Okay, let's get this deal closed. Let's let's you know let's close some business. Once that chapter closes, a new life cycle begins for this data, which is from a finance standpoint. Okay, there's a quote to cash, making sure that you're billing the customers and you're collecting the funds, making your CFOs happy and your cash flow smooth. This involves making asking the right question, like purchase order information, bill to, sold to con, uh, contact information for taxation purposes. Um, the, the, other, the other is the, the more, more important one. The first thing public companies report, revenue, income. Uh, that's all, this data is driving all this from a finance standpoint. The other aspect is customer success. You've got retention, renewals, making sure that your business stays healthy. Your, cus your customer success team is empowered with this data to make sure that they're reaching out to customers on time for renewals, uh, for growth opportunities, land and expand. Um, contract data drives all these metrics. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other one, main one is obviously port uh compensation systems plug into systems like HubSpot to pull out uh, compensation data and make sure that you know, you have the checks and balances to pay out what's earned versus just, you know, throwing data in there and not having that, that, uh, the, the credible end result that you're, that you're seeking. So, yeah. um, super important. Yeah. It sounds, you know, it sounds 
you know, the, the, the deal desk kind of becomes this, um, you know, central hub. It's a gatekeeper. You're, you're a gatekeeper. And, you know, it's, it's, and I've learned this, that, you know, to be in this function, you, you, small companies don't necessarily need to go out and hire new people. There's very light stacks like RevOps that can plug into your system for, for fairly reasonable price. Because again, when I come from more of a finance background, the data you're, you're, you're putting in systems today, it's going to be as important as it is today, three years from now, because if you're on a path of growth and you're scaling, you're going to have auditors coming in and they're going to want to pull up all of these contracts to make sure you're following, you're booking revenue in accordance to these contracts. If you have some kind of a wonky term in there, which prohibits revenue recognition and you've been booking revenue, that's a red flag. So your company's you know, performance is at risk there. So it's not a huge investment that you can make, especially tools like HubSpot. I mean, super easy to use. Um, we're again, native to, to, to that platform. And it's, it's a, a small investment for a long-term solution. Yeah. And, and we covered it a little bit, but let's just, uh, you know, wrap up with, with this idea of like the responsibilities uh, involved in deal desk um, and someone who's managing a, a deal desk you know, who is in, which pieces of the, of the go-to-market team are part of that process and kind of what is the overall responsibilities involved in, in, in running a deal desk? Yeah, I, again, you know, going back to, to, to what I said earlier, it's, it's essentially a project management rule. You're taking every deal is important to an AE, whether it's a 5,000 deal or it's a $5 million deal. It's important to that AE. So you want to provide a flat service, meaning you're not, there's no favoritism, but you do want to make sure that there's there's input from legal, from finance, from other stakeholders that are part of the company that are responsible for, for performance obligations, for revenue recognition, that they have their you know, limited um, you know, uh, input into how data should flow. Uh, so in a, you know, that's that from my experience, it's very it's it's a critical role, but again, the, we have light systems that can actually do the legwork for you. Oh, okay, great. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to uh, reel you in. Um, and so that's great. And I think hopefully we've given some context around deal desk generally. Um, and so I'm not going to go back to sharing my, my slides here because it looked like I was having some difficulty. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Dan, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, deal desk platforms um, and what you should be looking for and, and really give like a, a deep dive into uh, the RevOps deal desk platform and integration with HubSpot. So I'm gonna pass it off to him and uh, Dan, uh, take it away. Awesome, thanks Mark and, and great job, Sherrod. Uh, so obviously we're a little biased here at, at RevOps. So uh, to kind of talk about these features you should be looking out for or keep it in mind. As you explore deal desk platforms, I am going to use RevOps uh, as an example to demo here and kind of give you some visuals as we go along. Uh, for those who are taking notes, uh, because I'm limited to 10 minutes here today, there's three main features uh, that I'm going to talk about. Number one, product library. Uh, number two, approvals and collaboration. And then number three, uh, integration capabilities. So High level, those are going to be three really important, really, uh, really important features that you're going to want to keep in mind when you're exploring deal desk platforms. Uh, so let's get started with the first one, product library. Now, one of the biggest mistakes we see a lot of companies make uh, when it comes to their product library is they're storing it in the wrong place. A lot of times that's on a spreadsheet, uh, it's in their CRM, it's in their billing system. The reason that's a mistake is what the customer actually sees is the contract. The On the contract is dictating the pricing and the products that that customer is committing to, that you're agreeing to with that customer. So best practice, rule number one is ideally your product library, your, your list price, everything should be set at the CPQ deal desk level. And then from there, it's that system that's updating your CRM updating your billing system. You know, there's probably other systems you, you could send this data to, commission systems, et cetera. But it's very important that because it's the customer and your company, that's that the contract, that's the one thing in common between the two parties, that should be where this product library is set and what has access to it. And then, and then it's feeding the other systems. 
Uh, now, specifically with product libraries, you know, with certain CRMs, with billing systems, spreadsheets, obviously you're limited in the capabilities of how you can set up your products. So one thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is when you're exploring CPQs and deal desk platforms that their product library can support your pricing. You know, whether that's subscription pricing like monthly or annual subscriptions, uh, usage-based pricing, one-time fees, and it's possible or, or likely that you're probably using multiple pricing models with your products. You really want to do a deep dive into the type of pricing models that um, they can support, uh, because obviously you're going to want to build your product library. That's where that's going to be your single source of truth for your products and your pricing. So you're going to want to make sure it can support those pricing models that you use. And then uh, the other thing is you want to have locks in place with this product library. Uh, you don't want reps or sales or AEs on the sales team to be able to go in here and build their own products or change list, list price, et cetera. Uh, typically, best practices, this is set at an admin level. And then whatever set up in the product library, those reps, those AEs, you know, customer success, et cetera, they have access to those products and they can pull them into a quote. Uh, so this is RevOps product library. Uh, all of these products, we call them SKUs. We'll write them anywhere. We'll write them back to HubSpot as line items. Um, if you have HubSpot connected to a billing system, you can push them uh, to that billing system as well, or you could even do a direct integration uh, in certain cases with RevOps. But uh, ideally, your CPQ, your deal desk platform, that's going to be your single source of truth for your product library, because that's what the customer's agreeing to. That's what's going to be on the contract. And then from that contract, you're pushing data into all these other places. All right, the next component, is, or the key feature, I should say, is going to be approvals and collaboration. Now, for startups, uh, you're usually in logo acquisition mode. Uh, it's very likely you're, you're more open to bending the roles, doing whatever discount you need or whatever flexible terms you need in order to, to score the deal and, and win the contract. Uh, really where approval workflows become super important is as your companies grow. So as your company grows, your sales process is gonna become more repeatable. You're gonna make it more efficient. You're gonna settle in into, hey, these are the products that are selling the best, that we're making the most margin on, et cetera. And that's really where you wanna start thinking about approval workflows. Um, examples of approval workflows would be, hey, if the discount threshold uh, is under this percentage, we can just auto approve it. If it's a discount over this percentage, we want it to be either signed off on or approved on by a person or multiple people before the, the team can send it out. Uh, so something to keep in mind as you're exploring deal desk, as you're exploring CPQ is what are those approval features? Um, and, and the key here is you want to auto approve typically the standard or at least for the standard deals, right? With the low discounts, the standard terms, get those to move through the sales process as, as quickly as possible. Um, one of the things that can slow deals down the most is, hey, the rep sent, uh, tells the prospect that they're going to send them a quote, but then it takes them, you know, 24, 48 hours, you know, I've heard weeks or, or even a month in the worst case before they get their deal approved and they can send it to a client. Client. Everybody in sales knows time, you know, the more time you're not closing that customer, that's going to kill the deal. So the quicker you can go through this approval process, the better and get that, that quote to the customer, the better. And that's where setting up these roles, defining these roles, okay, what are we comfortable with the rep just sending to the customer without having to go through an approval versus what are those non-standard terms? What are those non-standard discounts that we need somebody to sign off on before the rep can send it out? Uh, so defining those roles and knowing what sort of roles can be set up in your deal desk platform are important, but then also uh, a key is going to be making sure there are locking mechanisms in place. Uh, so with RevOps, we have a stance of, hey, once a quote's been generated by a rep and submitted for approval, that quote locks. They can't send that quote. If it triggers an approval workflow, they can't send that quote to the customer. They can't share it. They can't download the PDF. They can't really do anything until that quote has been approved. Um, and that saves you from, you know, the rep sending a discount that hasn't been approved or sending, you know, termination for convenience clause without legal looking over it. 
those are the things you're going to want to keep in mind uh, as uh, you know regarding approvals um, as you explore this. And then within approvals, and this ranges kind of on your sales process and how involved your deal desk and other departments get with the deal. Uh, but what's the collaboration features of the deal desk platform? Is it just approval workflows or is there a collaboration that's going on on putting these deals together? Now at RevOps, uh, we have a collaboration tool built in. If I were to go to any of these deals, uh, the way it works is uh, this is a deal that has been submitted to it for approval by a rep. First thing it's going to do is highlight any of the changes that were, you know, non-standard. So in this case, you know, the default on this quote template is a 12-month contract. The rep sending a 24-month contract, so it highlights that. Also highlights any discounts that were applied. Now, as a deal desk manager, I could approve this quote, or maybe I see something in here that I want to have a conversation with the rep about. Maybe there's a clause here at the bottom, you know, uh, see we got the automatic contract extension or they took out the case study clause um, that I want to have a conversation about. Or maybe I have to go to maybe I have to go to market marketing and say, hey, are we OK with them not agreeing to a case study? What this collaboration tool lets you do is tag anybody on your team. So I could tag Mark. Uh, I could even tag a section. So I'll choose this uh, this marketing permission section. And uh, if there's you know, certain parts of the contract that as a deal desk manager or as a sales manager that I don't necessarily want to approve myself, but I want somebody else to be okay with it, I can tag them. I can as even assign that specific part for approval. And that still is part of that locking me mecha mechanism where it would need Mark's approval before I could send this out. Um, and you know, whatever comment I put here, please approve permissions. These comments get stored at the deal level. So there, these comments, whatever activity history is going on here, get stored at the deal level. Why is that important? Well, again, for growing companies, uh, new business contracts are going to be one part of your business, but all of a sudden you're going to get into renewals, you're going to get into co-terms and upsells and expansions. If you're having this activity history, commenting, taking place in email or Slack, what happens when it's the CSM who needs to come in and do the renewal and they have no idea why, you know, the AE gave them a 50% discount or they have no idea why, you know, this, the standard MSA wasn't used. Uh, so our, our philosophy is, hey, the collaboration, the commenting happens at the deal level and it gets attached to the deal for life. So when other people come in, maybe a new, maybe the original AE leaves and a new AE takes over. Again, the CSM use case, you know, anybody who wants to access, why did we put this deal together? Why did we give them these terms? Why did we, you know, sell them these products? It's happening on the deal. It stays with the deal and you can reference it at any point in time. You don't need to go back through uh, emails, Slack messages, et cetera, to figure out, you know, how this was put together. All right, I know we're getting close to time. Last thing I'm gonna talk about here, so is gonna be the integration aspect. Sherrod mentioned it, data is king, right? Data is so important and there's so much valuable data in our contracts and it's amazing how much of it is not used, not referenced, not analyzed. Uh, but really these contracts, that they have everything we need uh, to you know, make our customers more revenue for us in the future. Uh, now, our view at RevOps, every component of a RevOps contract is mappable. That means, you know, the length of this contract, that's a mappable field. Start date, end date, that's a mappable field. All these products, whether this product is recurring revenue or whether it's a one-time fee, you know, knowing things like that tells me, should this what amount should count towards ARR? What amount counts towards this percentage of commission or not? All of this data is mappable, uh, even billing data, right? Your, your, your finance team needs to bill this client based on what was agreed to in the contract. Are you billing them all up front or is this going to be monthly payments? You know, how is this contract supposed to be billed? So our view is every single aspect of this contract becomes a mappable field. What that lets us do is push this data to other systems. Now, in 
the majority of cases, your CRM HubSpot is going to be your single source of truth. So you're going to want most of this data, if not all of this data in your CRM. Now, anytime there's a change in status of this deal. So if I save this deal, oh, and actually I need to uh, attach it to an opportunity. So, and I can work from HubSpot. So we have, again, we have that direct integration with HubSpot. And what that lets us do is we can tie deal data into different workflows that HubSpot has available. So let's just pretend I was a rep here. I'm gonna go sling some software at, uh, at Jeff at Amazon. I can start with my RevOps quote. This is gonna pull in all my contact info from HubSpot. So it's gonna pull in my, my, uh, my customer address information, account information. Now, again, in this, this is a template. So this is gonna to default to 12 months. It's gonna to default to my standard products. As a rep, I can make changes to these products. I can apply discounts, let's say 20%, oops. Um, I can do what I need to do within the confines of how my admin have set up my product library. Uh, and then here at the bottom, again, my terms, uh, you know, you can create option terms where let's say I remove this like I did in the previous example. Uh, and each of these options become mappable fields as well. Now I've got um, a contract that I wanna submit to my deal desk manager for approval. Now it looks like I can approve my own deals, but that's only because I have admin privileges. Uh, most reps wouldn't. Uh, once there's a change in status to this deal, it's been saved, it's been submitted for approval, it's been approved, it's been signed. Every time that's gonna initiate a write back to HubSpot, uh, I can see my uh, integration with CRM was successful. If I exit out of here and go back to my HubSpot deal, now I've got a zero amount, I've got no line items, I've got a bunch of missing data here, right? But when I click refresh, because that sync just happened, my, op, my deal amounts automatically gonna update. My hubs, my, my line items are automatically gonna write back. And all that important information that I wanna track uh, is gonna write back as well, right? Did this, and this is where HubSpot's workflows are super helpful. And I'll give you a couple examples of how we use workflows in HubSpot with deal data. Every, uh, every time, so our standard uh, marketing permissions clause, Mark loves this one, our standard marketing permissions clause is, hey, after 90 days, uh, you know, we'll approach you for a case study, we'll approach you for a uh, G2 review, et cetera. What we do in HubSpot is it will look for this field. Well, it'll look for uh, status of the quote. So deal status would be signed. So it's a signed contract. And then it'll look for of our signed contracts, which of our customers gave us permission to be a reference, gave us permission for a customer story, gave us permission to use our brand. And then based on whether this is a yes or no, which again is pulling directly from a contract, we'll automatically send them an email after 90 days asking to set up uh, you know, a, a call to do a customer story. Uh, or in this case, no, it's no, so we wouldn't. It would, it would, the trigger would be off, uh, but maybe to be a reference, et cetera. So those are the types of automated workflows you can set up. Another really popular one is with the auto renewal clause, right? Was the auto renewal clause in the contract? Okay, that's going to change my CSM's workflow and how I approach the renewal for this customer. If it's an auto renewal, maybe my CSM doesn't need to, they don't need to get an, a new signed quote. If this is you know no if it's no from the contract now I can set up an automatic email that you know 30 60 90 days before the renewal date uh, to initiate that conversation around a renewal contract getting a new contract in place etc so uh, again high level every component of a RevOps quote is mappable um, and you know with the power of HubSpot combined you can build these workflows to uh, set up all sorts of dif different automated uh, workflows to take advantage of this data and use it effectively. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, yes, I agree that the ability to set up those uh, automated marketing workflows based on, uh, you know, marketing permissions and in, in contracts is, is very uh, useful as a marketer. Um, and uh, that kind of transitions us to the next uh, part of this, which is uh, Jennifer from Repsley, who's going to talk. Um, she's going to talk about how Repsley is using uh, 
our RevOps steel desk integration with HubSpot and some of the interesting uh, things that she's doing, both with the integration itself, as well as I believe some of taking that some of the data and using um, HubSpot's automation. Um, so uh, Jennifer, if you're, if you're ready, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and have you, I think you can go ahead and just share uh, your screen and, and take over. Awesome, thanks, Mark. Uh, hi, everyone, I'm Jen Quintero and I'm the Director of Revenue Operations uh, here at Repsley. And we brought RevOps on, I think, a little over six months ago. And I can relate a lot to some of the points that Sherrod and Dan kind of made in their sessions because we were at a point where when I joined, we were managing everything by, at first by a Word document. Reps were able to kind of put their own uh, pricing together, they could sign their own quotes. So it was really kind of just, you know, we were just trying to get new logos in the door. Um, after some time we realized, and as we started to grow, we realized we definitely needed some more controls. So I went ahead and created a super cumbersome spreadsheet that had tons of VLOOKUPs and macros in it that would pull from our pricing tables. Um, and then we put in a process, a pretty kind of elaborate one that you had to share the quote with finance, which we now consider kind of a little bit of a deal desk motion um, and make sure that they reviewed it prior to going out to the customer. Everybody that had to approve had to be CC'd on the email because we needed to make sure we had some type of trail of everybody approving. And then for finance, they needed to make sure that whenever our auditors came in, you know, they had something to show. Um, especially like, hey, we this deal happened and here are all of the approvals, here are all the things. Um, and then, you know, that worked well for a little bit. And then as we continued to grow and started ramping up our renewal process, a lot of the things that came up were, well, what happened to that deal? You know, what did we agree on? CS wanted to see the quote, they were all PDF files. So those were some of the pain points that we really had when we started looking for a solution to help Repsley. Um, I've implemented, you know, very cumbersome CPQs in the past, so I knew there was something better, but also we're a small and mighty team and wanted something that, you know, was scalable, flexible, and easy for us to use, um, and that's kind of where we found RevOps. It's been a great solution for us. It's really helped us just get more visibility into what's happening with our deals, and it creates transparency across our organization, and it makes finance feel definitely a lot more comfortable around what's going out to a customer uh, because they have control. We definitely have some levels of control and if anybody ever wants to go in and take a look at you know, what was shared, it all lives in HubSpot, which is great. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd show you a little bit of how our reps use it today and then what our deal desk kind of function looks like. Um, it is a little bit of what Dan shared, but I think that's okay. Um, so let me find my screen. Great. Um, so here's just our test company, you know, our contacts and our deals within our HubSpot instance. Um, our reps, you know, create opportunities based on like just when the demo happens. So they set up a kind of a default amount. When they're ready to share pricing with the customer, they can do it either two, uh, one of two ways. They can do it within the RevOps function right here, which some of them prefer. Others like to go into the RevOps tool itself. Uh, but I always promote to do it from here just because it keeps everything in one place. We have set up two different types of order forms. We have those that are for new business and renewals and those that are for upsell, especially because um, you have to prorate, give back credits. So it's really great that we can have some different types of um, sales orders out there and they all live in one place. Before we had to manage multiple, multiple versions of spreadsheets and had to make sure the reps had the latest and greatest spreadsheet that they weren't using the last one. So this really make, helps us make sure that they're using what we want. Um, it's really exciting that everything, oh, that's not good. Let's refresh it. All right. So what they really like is that it pulls in just information around the contact for them already. 
everything defaults to 12 months. They can obviously play around with this. We do a lot of multi-year um, contracts and the flexibility and just like the ease of the system being able to automatically um, update the pricing without having to think about it is awesome. Then we have some kind of custom fields for us right now. They have to put in their account ID. Um, they have to put in billing frequency and they can select it. So it's very easy for them. We do offer annually and quarterly payments. Um, and then they have the proposal expiration date, which is great because it's something we had before but never could really enforce because spreadsheets were just out there. Um, so once this passes, you know, the, per the prospect or the customer can't access this proposal anymore. So, you know, if we really want to kind of offer this great discount, which sometimes we do, and we say you have to sign by the end of the quarter, this proposal expiration date really comes in handy. Um, we then, the reps then go in here and type in their SKUs. And they can put in the, we have an up to amount. So this is really great. This is how we manage it with the quantity of one and the price per unit. They put a 10% discount. Sometimes they don't wanna share that. So the possibility, the option to be able to do that is always awesome. Um, and then we have one-time fees. And I'm gonna look for this one. And this is based on days. So as you can see, it includes up to one day with eight hours. So if I wanted to sell more days, um, that automatically updates. So this functionality works really, really well for us. Um, and it's really nice that we can split up our subscription versus our one-time fees um, pretty easily and then be able to share that back with the customer. We then submit this for approval and all of our approvals go to our finance team um, who is managing the deal desk. So our sales team knows that there is a 24 hour SLA because our deal desk reviews every single quote that comes across their desk. They make sure that the subscription dates are where they need to be. They make sure that like the products are where they need to be. And then we assign approvals based on the type of products that we have um, that we have added to the quote. So then what we do is our finance team goes in here and reviews, kind of making sure that you know your T's are crossed and they've dotted their I's and nothing kind of looks funky um, in here and that they've added a proper account IDs. And as you can see, everything kind of just goes to one person. We don't have approvals based on specific discounts within uh, RevOps right now, just because everything needs to be reviewed. And then we go to the comments. And what we do is we assign this specific section to kind of our revenue leaders. So if this is a new sales, um, quote, we assign it to our CSO. If it's a renewal quote, we assign it to our chief customer officer so that they can review. And we post that comment. And then here, everything that is a one-time fee goes to our professional services team. And this is super big for us because it's a new feature, um, a new kind of product that we have in a brand new team. So we wanna make sure that what the sales team is sharing back to the customer is actually doable and our professional services teams feels good about that. Um, so I'll tag them. And then we have a lot of instances where our professional services or CSO comes back and they, type in, you know, this is great, or can you think about something else? Um, and then we go back and forth on this comment section. And if anybody ever has any questions around what's happening, what's going on, we tell them, please go into the comments. We've really, really made this a point in our process that we do not want anything through email. We don't want anything through chat. And if there's anything that they need to have questions about or want, approval on, it all needs to be handled through RevOps. Once those two folks have fully approved everything, 
our DLDS then goes back in here and does the ultimate approval. So they make sure that our professional services team, our revenue leaders, if it has to be our leadership team, because there's a, a large um, discount that they've gone in and everybody has done their part before the rep can actually share this with the customer. Um, so then she'll get it. I can approve it because um, one of the admins here. And then we have some workflows in place that then drive this back to HubSpot, which, you know, the moment that a code is shared, the stage automatically updates into kind of sale order pending, or if it's a negotiation, it updates back into the system. And that just really helps us also make sure that our sales process is correct. We struggled a lot sometimes with really knowing where things were. So RevOps has really helped just automatically push that through. And then ultimately just being able to see what they sold because then we have reporting and dashboards that are in place that we share with our professional services team that says, this is how much implementation they bought. This is how many hours they get. Um, and as a next step, which we're really excited for is we're gonna create that integration with our new billing function. Um, so we're really starting to build kind of that whole loop uh, between our CRM, our quoting system um, and our billing solution. So. RevOps has really been a game changer for us and it's just automated a lot of what we're doing. Awesome, wow, um, that, was, that was super awesome. Uh, it's really exciting to kind of see, see it in action uh, and some of the cool things folks are doing. Um, I see that uh, Dan has been diligently <laughs> answering some of the questions here in the chat that have been going on. Um, and we got quite a few uh, in the Q&A section as well. Um, so, uh, there's a few questions about the integration and, and maybe Jennifer, uh, you could help also with some of your experience and it, thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to do that. Um, it was super, it was super awesome. So, um, uh, so I think one of the questions we can get started on, um, and Dan, I think this one would be good for you. Is it, is it possible to build out a full SOW in the, in the templates or is it pretty focused on products? Yeah, great question. Um, so the, the templates are totally customizable uh, based on how you want to set them up. So if you want to do SOWs, you certainly can. Uh, really any type of agreements, right? So quotes and, and order forms are just one type of agreement, but SOWs, M MSAs, NDAs. Um, we have lots of customers doing lots of different types of agreements. And the reason is the templates are, are very customizable in terms of how you want to set them up and use them. Yeah. And um, there, there was a question about um, which HubSpot plan is needed for the integration. Um, so I believe that there are various parts of the integration that require different levels of the plan. But if you go to our marketplace um, listing, it should uh, detail um, all the requirements of which plan um, is required um, for all the features. Um, yeah, I, 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 be, I believe it works. It does work with HubSpot's um, even most basic plan um, to do some of the workflows and automation I talked about though, you would definitely need to upgrade to a, a higher uh, HubSpot plan. Uh, but if you're just looking to integrate RevOps with, with HubSpot, it should work with the uh, most basic HubSpot plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, there was a question here um, uh, uh, from Melissa uh, about how, how can, uh, how does this interact with um, HubSpot quotes? So I don't know, Jennifer, do you, how do you, does, do you use? Uh, we like do, yeah, we don't use HubSpot quotes because um, just the way that our pricing model is set up, but I do know I think it's like one or the other because the product line items do feed back into it. Uh, there's definitely more flexibility with the RevOps function. And that's why we went with that option instead of HubSpot quotes. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, uh, Dan, this, is a, this, this might be a, an easy question for you. Um, how does Rev, uh, I'm sorry, how many logos can a company use for a RevOps account for a quote proposal contract? What happens if your company has three sales verticals? three brand logos. So oh yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so right now there'd be just one logo associated with uh, the, 
you know, the, the one RevOps account, each RevOps account uh, for customers like with multiple logos or multiple business units, uh, you could just set up individual instances uh, and, and leverage a different logo for each one. Okay. Um, here's another interesting uh, use case. Um, how would this work if we had a deal that had to be on the customer's legal terms? Um, we work with uh, some government, some some governments uh, that have their own terms. Um, can we upload something that can be stored somewhere, and even if the quote wasn't made in RevOps? Yeah. So there's the ability to attach uh, documents to uh, RevOps. So you could, um, it's actually a very common use case. Like if you're either using your customer's MSA or using a redlined MSA, whether it's yours or your customers, you can attach that to RevOps and it will, it will upload as an attachment. Mm -hmm. And there was a question here about uh, just deal desk in general. Um, and I leave it up to the, uh, to my panel here. Um, how different is a deal desk than from just tracking all leads and deals kind of regularly in a, in a Kanban or, or a list area? Um, I, I think we probably covered a little bit of this um, in, earlier on uh, about kind of deal desk being really about this kind of central hub of managing the various um, people involved in, in, in a deal and, and, and the data required to kind of move it around. I don't know, Sherrod, if you want to maybe take that. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's it's so important to have a system that does most of the heavy lifting, because, again, if you're managing this in like some spreadsheets and, and uh, you know, just some off systems where it's not all everything's not working in, in a collaborative mode, um, you tend to things tend, tend to slip through the cracks and having systems and, and, and integrations do all the legwork makes sense. Like, for example, if you're putting in contract data in RevOps and then having to manually put that in a HubSpot, it's, it's you know, humans make mistakes when they're punching in numbers. Systems do what they're told to do. So what they're programmed to do. So, you know, it, it, it just makes sense to have a system do the heavy lifting when, when it's, it's, it's affordable and it's out there. Right. I'll add one thing, cause I think what might be a little bit confusing here is just the naming conventions we use because uh, HubSpot deals uh, is a is a it's a HubSpot term and and you know other people might know them as opportunities, uh, et cetera. So uh, the deals list in HubSpot is more going to be associated with your opportunities. So those are um, you know customers that you have an opportunity or a deal with that you're tracking during a sales process. When we talk about deal desk or a deal in RevOps, you know, you could say deal, but maybe more easier to understand if we use the, the term quote or order form or contract. That's what we're talking about with RevOps. And every deal in HubSpot, again, opportunity deal uh, in HubSpot will have an associated uh, contract order form, you know, once you, especially once you reach latter stages of the sales cycle. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're coming towards the end here, but there were, uh, I saw one or two questions regarding Ops Hub. Um, and uh, how RevOps might work with Ops Hub or how is it different? So um, RevOps, we, you can use webhooks uh, and the API uh, to do all sorts of exciting things with Ops Hub. And we're, even, we're just now kind of really scratching the surface about some of the interesting ways you can use HubSpot data uh, through webhooks to move it all around and, and trigger various automations. Um, and I believe uh, at some time, some point in the near future, we're gonna kind of come out with some more content around uh, interesting use cases around this because we're starting to build up that uh, use case library. Um, and the way, you know, I think that these are uh, complementary products. So Ops Hub um, does the, you know, programmable automation where RevOps is kind of purpose built for um, this use case and is um, kind of native, um, does, you know, it's, it's a no code type thing. Um, and it does a lot of the, it does all that stuff in the background. Um, but, you know, because of our, our web hooks, uh, you know, we have a whole doc section about how that works. Um, there's all sorts of interesting stuff that could be done um, with, with Ops Hub. Uh, so uh, that we're coming up on time. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to really thank everybody um, for uh, taking the time to be with us and my, 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 fellow panelists here, uh, Jennifer, uh, Sherrod, and Dan. 
Um, I do want to just share, uh, if my sharing will work, um, that, you know, if you ever want to connect uh, with us, uh, with the, our, you know, our website's revops.io, um, we do have a 30-day free trial, no credit card required of the product. If you want to uh, schedule a call with our team to learn more about the integration, you can. As like, like I said, we are in the marketplace, uh, the HubSpot marketplace as well. Um, and feel free to reach out to Sharad, Dan, or myself on LinkedIn or via our email. Um, we'd love to connect with you. Um, I know that we'll be sharing uh, these slides uh, and we have some resources that uh, folks can, can leverage. Um, Afterwards, some of the we have some some calculators and some some templates that people can use on their own. Um, and like I said, you can see it in action yourself, uh, get a, a demo or try it uh, yourself. Um, and I don't know, Jennifer, if you have uh, any parting words as well uh, about where people can find Repsley or a little bit more about Repsley. Yeah. Um, so Repsley is a retail uh, execution platform and. What we do is we work with brands primarily in kind of the consumer packaged goods space of so food and beverage, health and beauty, um, and really help them understand how their product is doing on the shelf and how their sales teams um, are kind of working. So if you guys uh, have any questions regarding Repsley or want to take a look at what the software is, it's repsley.com. And then you can also find me on LinkedIn. I think that wraps about everything up. Thank you to the HubSpot community. Thank you, Jan. Uh, and thank you for everybody that joined us today. And uh, have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.